Moana's back, baby! And that means Maui and the friends are along for the ride in Moana too. Mo Moana, Mo Problems. Let's talk about it in a spoiler-free review. I love that song. I don't know any of the lyrics, but I love it. Nothing comes close to that song in the second film. There is music. Some of it's solid. None of it's amazing. None of it's making me sing along. They, they do have a new theme that's going to come up one or two times with Moana flipping around on the boat but it's not hitting me in the soul, man. Not like that first film does. Before I go on this journey with Moana and her friends and the, the little pig and the other pig and the, the chicken and what other other merchandise they created for this thing, if you wouldn't mind taking a cup of water and just splashing that subscribe, I would appreciate it. And hitting the notification bell too. Take some more water and just splash the notification uh, right on your computer or your phone. Trust me, it's the best way to subscribe to the channel, Adam Does Movies, because I post movie commentary, rants, live streams, reviews every week. Would love to have you along for this journey. Let's go on one with Moana and friends now. Folks, this is a rarity, but we have a Disney sequel, princess film, that didn't go straight to VHS. That didn't go straight to DVD or Disney+, Plus, which, let's face it, is the new straight to VHS for anybody that's uh, depressingly old at this point, like myself. There's gonna be some people that say, what's VHS, Papa? And then the dad will come over. Ah, uh, yes, VHS. <laughs> I remember VHS tapes going to the local Sam Goody and paying 30% more than you would at literally any other store. This was a time when people didn't say literally like they were breathing either. It was just a, it's a, one of those newfangled words that came up and was abused and, and punished like I was in most people my age, because we were all abused back then. Anyway, yes, VHS, what a time to be alive. The heck am I talking about? Oh yeah, Moana 2. Moana 2 Cruise Control sees everything kind of on Cruise Control, because there's not much here that warrants a sequel on the big screen. Not a bad film. No, slow your roll, okay? Calm down. It's a fine movie. It's perfectly adequate. It's familiar, mediocre, perhaps a bit middling in the middle, but overall uh, a colorful, vibrant, beautiful looking picture with a lovable lead and Dwayne The Rock Johnson once again playing Maui. Can I get a chi He asks in a stupid voice. That's right, look out skadoosh. Step aside, Kachow. What are you even doing here, Bazinga? Can I get a chi -hoo? Can I get a chi That's right, Maui gets his own catchphrase and a song to accompany it. And it kind of kills me inside to say this, but it's one of the best songs in the movie. And this is coming from a person that doesn't really like your welcome from the first film. I couldn't really, I didn't really vibe with that song. But uh, Chi Hu is a, is a solid little uh, toe thumper. Toe thumper is not an expression, but uh, let's just keep going. Moana 2 is going to take us through a rich tapestry of storylines, ranging from I need to seek out other tribes across the ocean to Hey, I need to find people across the ocean. And finally capping at Look, we got to get over there and find more people, okay? We are told that if Moana doesn't find other tribes, other cultures to bring together, to bridge the islands, that some curse or something will happen that will render her current situation in a poor light. We're never shown this. We're never, you know what? Uh, uh, actually, I need, to, I need to say something right now. M the kids and I were late to this movie by about three minutes. We missed the first three minutes of the film. So if the first couple minutes talk about what could happen to the island or they show some bad times coming, forget everything I just complained about. Maybe the plot is perfectly serviceable, but what I saw leads me to believe there isn't enough meat on the bone. I wanted more into what could happen. I need to see the threat. I need to see the stakes. Because as it stands, 
There is an island they have to get to, and she's got a little pot that's broken that gives a map of sorts. She is a wayfinder, so she's able to use a spirit to guide her along her journey. But from what I could gather, there's really not much of a threat in this film. At one point, the coconut tribe shows back up. That's a really fun scene. Moana, in between movies, has learned how to be like a martial arts kung fu paddle boat master. So she's like spinning around the rope, blocking shots with her oar. That stuff's cool. I like that. I'm, I'm all in on a, on a Disney princess who's not actually a Disney princess. They point that out in the film, which is funny. It's meta. I like it. Who can kick a bunch of butt? And she's got the arms for it. She's jacked. Moana got an upgrade. She looks great. Whole film looks fantastic. Unfortunately, joining her on this misadventure is going to be a ragtag crew of idiots. Unsalvageables are going to come along for the ride. Ranging from an old bitter man who doesn't like the water to a plucky young stupid person who likes to cut things with an axe and causes a bunch of trouble right out of the gates. Then you have the Maui super fan, a stan of the character who draws a bunch of fanfic and uh, he's fine. He's kind of funny and harmless. I just, listen, I know this is a kid's movie, but uh, family films can be brilliant. We've seen it a million times. And Disney movies are synonymous for some of the best storytelling and animation along the years. I just can't understand why her parents would pick these idiots to go along for the ride. They have not shown that they have any sort of potential before this adventure. So it's just frustrating when we have a protagonist who's hampered down with complete numbskulls. We saw this recently in that terrible Buzz Lightyear movie. It's just one of those tropes that I can't stand. We got a bunch of quirky characters who are always causing a bunch of trouble. I wonder if they're going to grow by the end of the film. Like, she has a whole tribe of people and these are the best they could conjure up? Like the old dude who doesn't like the ocean? Are you kidding me? There's got to be another farmer on standby. Yeah, so that, that stuff kind of irked me. Uh, because also, they're not bringing anything to the table for a long time. They're just causing Moana more stress than she needs. We're talking about a very important mission, too. Uh, there's <clears throat> really no villain in this. There is. He's a god. He's upset. We don't see him. Uh, just, just some tornado clouds here and there, and that's about it. There is this weird side quest halfway through the movie where we're introduced to a, a, a bat lady character who inexplicably just goes missing for the rest of the story. She gets a, th she gets a song. I mean, I know what they're doing. They're doing the same thing they did with the first one with the shiny crab thing down below in MonsterVerse, which that should have been explored much better because that was such a short, interesting area that I wish they would have dove into further. But no, this is just such a, a, a lackluster character who comes and goes and we don't really ever hear anything else again. <laughs> odd. Very odd premise and setup. So yes, overall, it's kind of the same exact thing again, but told less interesting. I will say the final act had me a bit hooked. I was nervous. I was actually feeling stuff for the characters. Visually, it's pretty exciting. Impressive water display and everything. Everything's looking good. Uh, everything's looking good. It's just, unfortunately, not rising to the challenge. The first film is very well beloved. Some people don't like it that much. Others adore it. I'm kind of in between. I thought it was good. I really, I did enjoy it a lot. I was a little bit worried about making another one and trying to hit a higher note and they just, they fell short on it. But yeah, overall a fine film. I can totally see how this at one point was going to be a Disney Plus TV show and it was repurposed as a movie. You kind of can see where they would go throughout the season with some of these plot points. And just the fact that this kind of big adventure that could have been was resolved so quickly in an hour and a half. There was a lot of story you could have told here, but it's just pushing and zipping through everything and adding new characters and not doing a whole lot with them and bringing back classic characters. And yeah, it's got good stuff for sure. I don't think any family is going to have a problem going and having a good time with this one. I do think if you're expecting something more, though, 
a deeper lore, more character development, a more exciting, larger plot. You're not going to see any of that. As it stands, though, safe, easy, disposable. That's Disney. That's Disney 100% now. All right, let me know your thoughts on Moana. Where are you at with it? You like the sequel? You loving it? You're waiting for a third one, which absolutely will happen. I'm sure this will make a ton of money. You'll probably hit that billion mark at some point. Let me know in the comments. Like this video if you want. Hit the notification bell and subscribe. I would appreciate it a lot. And I would super duper ka-chow, bada-bing, shazam, skadoosh. Can I get a chi who? If you would become a patron at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Different tiers, different perks. I'm making new stuff every month and it's exclusive and I would love to have you. All right, hopefully I see you next time. Stay dry out there. I don't, I don't even know what that means. Take care.